In September of 1982, I arrived here, in Britain. And over a period of 39 years, you'd think I'd get to know it well. But then I began flying over it, and quickly realised that I barely knew my country at all. It's amazing how a bird's eye view can change your perspective on a place. It's a country filled with the remains of the great civilizations of old. From fallen castles, to great towers of remembrance. A country where a World War I memorial and a 3,000 year old fortification can share the same hillside. These are the Fovent Badges in the south of England, a tribute to those lost in the Great War. These ten huge badges stretch over half a kilometre on the hillside and are made from up to 50 tonnes of chalk each. If you would like to experience the highlights of today's flight in virtual reality, then follow the link at the end of this video. No wind today. This is a tough one. I'm the last one and there's a nervousness that comes with this because everybody is now waiting for you to get off the ground and if you biff the launch you're on your own to set up and do everything so let's not biff the launch let's have a successful launch successful launch successful launch I really feel like I'm getting into the spirit of what this sport is all about, for me anyway, which is these one, two hour cross country flights. Pick something interesting within an hour away from your LZ, go take a look at it, and then come back. And that's what we're doing today. Just like you do at a weekend with your family, let's go and see this, let's go and see that, except you're flying. Staggering good fun. So the place that we're heading to this morning, as I mentioned earlier, is a place called Fovent. And the things that we're going to look at are called the Fovent Badges, which are these huge pictures in the side of the hill which have been carved. This is where the World War I soldiers came to do trench warfare training, if you can imagine that. It's incredible to think what they went through. And uh, a lot of them didn't come back, but the regiments carved these badges, the, the regiment badges into the side of this this hill. I think we all have family or know of people who served in the military. I have family that served in World War One. My great grandfather was in the bicycle corps and my uh, my grandfather, my dad's dad was in World War Two, just after World War Two, he was over in Palestine. My brother was in the Navy. I applied to the Air Force myself uh, as a pilot but sadly I, I failed the medical at the last hurdle. So that wasn't meant to be, sadly. So let's go pay our respects. Just think of how many men each one of these badges represents who fell in World War One. It's utterly mind-blowing, the numbers. It's hard to find the words.
So this countryside that you see right here is where the British soldiers would prepare for trench warfare over in France. It's really something. And on the top of the hill here, I don't know whether this is one of the trenches, the makeshift trenches that they would train in, probably. It's so lovely to come back to the countryside here where I grew up and just see it from a completely different vantage point. It's like I'm seeing it for the first time again. So this chap down here is a friend of ours who has circumnavigated the globe twice on a yacht. He's uh, quite the dude. It's amazing the people you meet in this sport. Come on dude, come on dude, come on dude. That's it, that's it, that's it. Run, 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 run. Come on, come on. Yes. <laughs> that was full commit. He was right on the edge there. Right, back to the LZ for tea and biscuits. so much for joining us on this one. If you'd like to experience this flight in virtual reality, then follow the link. Like if you liked, subscribe if you haven't, and we'll see you in the next one.